Hey everybody, so in this video, I just wanted to talk about something that concerns me for the near future. So I know everybody right now kind of cheers about seeing uh, CPI come in lower, but this is not something to cheer about. This is really going to cause a serious, serious drawback in uh, revenues for many, many companies. So uh, let's just talk about the um, economic cycles. So we were, and maybe we still are, in a wage price spiral. So for a wage price spiral, you see higher prices of consumer goods. This leads to higher demand of wage, which then causes higher labor costs leading to higher prices, and that leads to inflation. So this cycle just continues on and on and on until um, some outside force literally puts an end to this and that outside force is going to be the federal reserve and as we saw they have been increasing interest rates and in the most recent fomc projection materials they basically told us hey in 2023 the median um fed funds rate that we're thinking about is 5.1 percent now, um, here in September, they were thinking that this was going to be 4.6% for 2023. So they're really planning to um, increase interest rates even more in 2023, which is going to put a serious damper on our economy. So also pay attention here that they, they want the um, unemployment rate about almost 1% higher. So we're going to see some pain and uh, take a look at the uh, GDP. So they want GDP to be around uh, 05 now, if we're talking about GDP, uh, it's the majority of this comes from consumer spending. So if GDP is very low or even negative, it means that consumer spending is taking a big, big hit. So um, let's go ahead and let's come back to these economic cycles. So what happens after the wage price spiral? Well, um, eventually we get to this uh, deflationary spiral. So we see falling demand, we see falling prices, we see debt defaults, bankruptcies, layoffs, and wage reductions. And then this eventually leads to falling demand. So this becomes a deflationary spiral until some outside factor decides, hey, you know what, let's get out of this uh, deflationary spiral and let's get back into a growth spiral. So, um, you know, that outside um, force is obviously going to be the Fed. And that's when they start injecting money into the economy. And, you know, they start doing um, easy money policies. So uh, let's just talk about this a little bit. So here we have higher prices of consumer goods. So that essentially means that we're going to see revenues inflate, which we've already seen. So we've seen plenty of companies on their earnings report. They're still reporting great revenue numbers, but it's not, you know, the growth in revenue is not as high as we were expecting. So um, revenue growth is looking like it's kind of slowing down, but the revenue numbers are still very high. And that is because of these higher prices. Now, you know, sometimes it's a little bit deceptive because we don't necessarily know if the demand is still high because, a lot of this um, pricing, this higher pricing, can cover up some of that lack in demand. So we still see this high revenue number, but maybe that's not entirely the case. But here in the deflationary spiral, we start seeing falling prices and falling demand. So revenue is going to get hit in two ways. So essentially, we're going to see the price of goods come down. So that's going to hurt revenue. And then we're going to see demand come down. So that's also going to hurt revenue. So we could see a very sharp deceleration in companies' revenues. And that is something that is very, very, very concerning. Now, keep in mind, there's an entire other side to this. If prices are falling, that might also mean that input costs go down as well. So if we're starting to see um, fewer employees, you know, that means expenses are getting cut back. And... We're, we're definitely seeing some of this. We're seeing a lot of these mega cap companies um, basically doing layoffs, but we're not necessarily seeing wage reductions yet. We're seeing quite a few layoffs. So um, this is definitely happening. And when we do see these falling prices, uh, like I said, um, on the supply side, 
you know, we're basically going to get our input costs at a lower price, but we're also lowering our um, price of goods. So we really need to pay attention to what these uh, gross margins are for these companies. And we want to see if those are still holding up because it's very possible that um, the gross margins could fall even more than they did in the wage price spiral. So here in the wage price spiral, we saw higher prices of consumer goods and we saw higher labor costs leading to higher prices. So those higher prices made up for a lot of the margin, but here in the deflationary spiral, you know, we're gonna see falling demand and falling prices. So is, are those margins going to hold up? We already know that revenue is likely going to fall, but are those margins going to hold up? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I know that um, times may be hard, but I will be making more um, accounting related videos here coming up because here in the next one month or so, we're going to have a series of earnings. And I think it's going to be very, very beneficial for all of you to just know a little bit more accounting to understand exactly where a company's financial position lies in this potential recessionary period. So hope you guys enjoyed this video and look forward to more accounting related videos.